Hi everyone, my name is Megan. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be filming a Q&A. So last week over on my Instagram, I asked all you guys for some Q&A questions so I could film a video and so now I am just going to answer your questions and if you guys want to be involved in Q&A's, I will link my Instagram account down below. That's where I ask for any questions like this and where I post a lot of stuff about our day-to-day -day lives. I try to do a post every day. If you are new to my channel, my name is Megan. I'm a young mom and wife. I am 20 years old and I have a 10-month-old daughter and I'm 19 weeks pregnant with our second. I do all kinds of mommy and lifestyle videos. We live on a small homestead in Montana. I like to do from scratch recipes in the kitchen and homesteading type videos. So I just kind of have a whole range of videos that I do. And so if you're interested in stuff like that, please don't forget to subscribe down below and like this video. Now let's get right into this Q&A. How many kids do you want? I get this question a lot and I want a lot of kids. Personally, I think I'd want like six, seven, eight kids. I love kids and ever since I was little, I wanted a lot of kids. I think when I was younger, me and my friend used to say that we wanted 27 kids each, which is insane, and I've dialed it back a little bit since then, but it's always just been a dream of mine and a passion that God has given me. I'm new to your page. Do you have a recipe for your bone broth? I don't have a video recipe yet. I do have a blog post that I did about bone broth, but it's how to make it in the stock pot on the stove top. I don't have an instant pot bone broth recipe, which is what, for the most part, I make now that I have an instant pot. It's super convenient. That is actually on my list of videos that I need to film. Recipe videos just take me a lot more time, and right now with having a 10-month-old and being pregnant and tired, I don't have a ton of time. And we are also remodeling our kitchen, so I'm not super motivated to film in the kitchen when it doesn't look how I want it to look, but that is on my list. I love making bone broth, so I will definitely be getting that recipe out to you guys soon. But I will link the blog post I have about it as well in case you guys want to look at that. Do you ever get tired? It seems like you just keep going. I'm tired all the time. <laughs> Sophia is quite the handful. I feel like I'm just constantly taking care of her and changing her diapers and making food and canning stuff, but being pregnant especially, I'm very tired a lot. Thankfully right now I'm in the nesting phase of pregnancy, so that really motivates me to clean stuff and get stuff done and get, get food prepped. So that's been really handy to have the nesting on my side. When I was first pregnant in my first trimester, I got almost nothing done and I felt really guilty about it, but sometimes that's just how it goes. You go through phases where you really don't feel well and you don't get very much done and that's okay. I've just had to come to accept that there's gonna be phases where I don't get much done at all and there's phases where I get a ton done and I'm feeling really good about it. I'm a soap maker and notice you are too. Have you tried the cold process method? What is your favorite scent? I have tried the cold process method. I've tried it once and it was pretty fun as an experiment but I think just for day-to-day -day stuff, I'm, I'm terrible at planning and what I love about hot, hot process is that it's ready like almost right away. You, you let it cool and you can use it like an hour or two after even. So with my kind of scatterbrained approach to getting stuff done, hot process is definitely what I need to do. Especially since I sell all my soaps online and I'm constantly running out and having to whip up a batch real quick. So I don't think that cold process would work for me, but it was fun to try it once. I made some cold process kombucha soap with orange and lavender essential oils and it was amazing. And my favorite soap scent has to be pumpkin spice. I just love fall time and the pumpkin smells. I do make a pumpkin spice hot process soap and it is by far my favorite. What does your husband do for work? My husband is a painter. He actually works with his brothers, which is pretty cool that they all get to work together and see each other all the time. But they paint houses. Right now it's getting to be fall, so they're painting a lot more interiors. Luke is actually a lot more of a carpenter and he would love to eventually do carpentry for a living. But right now painting is just working for us. It's kind of hard to find jobs here where we live. And with having really young kids, it's nice to just have a consistent income. So right now he paints. How did you and Luke meet? We actually met snowboarding. And this is kind of a funny story because I was 
really young. We have a seven year age difference and I think I was like 14 or 15 when we met. He had met my mom before this. He started going to our church and him and my mom met. And so we all went snowboarding and my mom was the coordinator for the homeschool ski program. And so she was really busy with getting everyone's tickets and getting everyone lined up for lessons and everything for the day. So she actually asked Luke to babysit me because <laughs> he's a bit older than me. So that is how we met. We went up the lift together and I was feeling really awkward because I was scared of being with a guy by myself. That's how all that started. What job did you want as a child? I've always wanted to be a wife and a mom. From the youngest I can remember, that's just been my dream and my passion and I'm living my dream right now. And it, in a lot of ways it's harder than I expected and a lot of ways it's more amazing than I expected. So I'm just super blessed to be able to get to do what exactly what I've wanted to do since I was a kid. How long have you and Luke been together? We've been married for about two and a half years, coming up on three years. And then before that we were engaged for three months and we were courting for three months. I guess in total just a bit over three years, which is crazy that we've only been together a total of about three years and we already almost have two kids. How long do you plan on breastfeeding this next baby? A lot longer than I breastfed Sophia, that's for sure. If everything goes well, I want to breastfeed a long time. <laughs> I got pregnant when Sophia was about six months old. By the time she was seven months old, I was having to supplement her a lot with formula and by the time she was eight months old, she was basically done breastfeeding because I just dried up despite my very, very best efforts to keep it going. I did like everything I could think of to get it back up and I have hyperthyroid and I'm on the skinny side so I just don't think my body had the reserves to be pregnant and breastfeed and it was just really trying to stop so that was disappointing that I didn't get to breastfeed her as long as I wanted to but at least I made it to about seven months but the next baby I want to breastfeed into at least a year like I feel no rush at all to even get this next baby started on solids as soon as Sophia a lot of things happened because I got pregnant that she she started eating a lot more solids than I than I would have wanted her to because I didn't have enough milk so I might not even start introducing solids to this next baby until they're like nine or ten months old and just like totally for fun not really for any nutrition kind of the tentative plan right now is to wait until this next baby is a little bit over a year before we get pregnant again so then they can definitely make it to a year with exclusively breastfeeding and then I'll have a little bit after that until my milk starts to go away but we might decide to wait a little longer and breastfeed until the baby's like a year and a half or even two years but we'll see but I am super into breastfeeding I love it so much and I was so sad that I couldn't breastfeed my daughter as long as I wanted to. Are you happy that you had a baby so young? Yes, I am super happy about this. I had Sophia when I was 19, and that is pretty young. I don't think most 19 year olds are thinking about having children. And it was amazing, and I'm so glad we started young. My body recovers so much faster from labor and pregnancy and everything and I just I mean there's not really anything else I'd want to be doing and I feel like if I wasn't having kids this young I would just be wasting my time because that is my my dream to have kids I'm not saying that if you don't have kids young that you're wasting your time obviously God has a different plan for everyone's lives but for me I am super super happy that I had a kid that young do you plan on having another home birth Yes, definitely. I am really glad I had a home birth with Sophia and it was amazing to just be at home in my comfort zone and where we had everything we needed and then I didn't have to drive home from the hospital after she was born and take the newborn baby in the car which would have totally freaked me out because I didn't even take her out until she was like a month old because I was so scared to take her in the car. But we loved being at home and it was just me and Luke and our midwife and I think we're going to do that do it that way again if at all possible. I'm hoping that I go into labor at night so that Sophia can be asleep, but see how that works out. I have a video planned on all the supplies I get together for a home birth and all that stuff that I'll probably film when I get a little closer and I'm like actually gathering that stuff up because now it's a little early, I'm only 19 weeks. Is there anything you're going to do different with your new baby that you didn't do with Sophia? I think so. With Sophia, I was a first time mom. I was super nervous. I just had no idea what I was doing. And I think with this next one, I wanna just be more chill, I guess, would be the main thing. Like when they start crying, as long as they're not hurt or they, 
you don't really need something. Like you can tell from their cry if they actually need something or they're in distress. But I think it created a lot of problems with Sophia just needing to be held all the time and having sleep problems. We end up having to sleep train her. And I think it all stemmed from the fact that I was just so afraid to let her fuss a little bit. I think with this next baby, I mean, it's gonna have to be because I'm gonna be dealing with Sophia while the next baby cries a little bit. I mean, having two, it's just gonna happen naturally anyway. But I think just being more chill and not freaking out about any little thing changing and realizing that babies go through a ton of phases and that I just need to relax a little bit. <laughs> Hopefully I'm able to relax a little bit, but I, I'm already getting really relaxed with Sophia and all of her new phases, and so I think it's gonna go a lot smoother this time. What are your favorite YouTube channels? I have a bunch of favorite YouTube channels, and I will link them all down in the description box, but probably my top favorite would be Lucky's Life. She is also a young wife and mom. I also really love Joyful Chaos, and This Gathered Nest, and Farmhouse and Boone, for sure, and her sister over at Our Oily House. I think those are the main ones, but if I think of any more, I will still link them below. Do you plan on homeschooling? Yes, definitely. Both me and my husband were homeschooled as kids. We never went to public school at all, and I think that's just definitely the way to go if you're able to. I don't believe that public schools are good for kids at all, and I want to be the one influencing our kids and raising them up in a godly manner and not leaving it to our government to raise them and hope that they do a good job. So I am a very strong advocate for homeschooling. We will definitely do homeschooling, probably leaning strongly towards unschooling even, and let our kids kind of naturally develop interests and seek out learning those as they want to instead of forcing them to. But our kids are still really young, so our plans for that will probably slightly change over time, and as it gets closer, I'll probably do more videos on the subject. What is the hardest thing about being a mom? Probably that it's a 24-7 job and you never get a break. Even at night, it, I remember that being a huge shock to me as a first time mom, is that you never get a break, like ever, ever, especially if you're breastfeeding. Like when that baby wakes up at night, you're the one that has to get up and go feed them. And But Luke obviously could help me a little bit, but he couldn't feed her and I mean, she just really wanted me a lot and we haven't really let anyone babysit her. Even now that she's 10 months old, she hasn't been babysat by anyone. So it's, it really is a full-time job. And it was really a shock to my system, like how time intensive babies are and how, like it, it freaked me out a little bit when I was first a mom. Like this is like what I'm gonna be doing for the next 18 years or something ridiculous. I mean, it gets easier. It definitely gets easier as they get older, but I think that was the hardest part for me. What did you do before you got married? Well, I got married the day after my 18th birthday, so I wasn't an adult before, really before I got married. I did finish high school a year early, and what I did for a job was train horses. I have loved horses since the time I was really little, and once we moved to Montana from Arizona, we actually had the opportunity to own horses, and I loved it so much, and I just put all my energy into learning everything about training horses and I did kind of the Buck Brenneman style, if any of you know what that means. And so I would take in people's problem horses and fix problems that they had and start colts. Do you plan on moving to a larger home eventually? Will Sophia share a room with the new baby? Yes, we do plan on moving probably very soon. I mean, we were planning on moving in the spring, but I don't know if we'll have our house finished by then. We bought this house kind of as an investment house to fix up and to flip and then probably the next few houses will be fix and flips. I don't know if we will find a permanent house for years to come, but I'm totally good with that. I'm, I am definitely not one of those women who's freaked out about living in a construction zone and Sophia crawls on plywood subfloors and finds nails on the floor and I just have to become really chill with that and I mean, make it as safe for her as possible. But our house is really small and I don't, the next house will probably be bigger but we probably won't stay there very long either. And as for our kids sharing a room, our sleeping situation right now is a little bit weird because we have two upstairs bedrooms, but they're totally unfinished and kind of weird and creepy. And we have one downstairs room, which is the master bedroom. And Sophia sleeps in that bedroom, and then me and Luke sleep out in the living room, <laughs> which is weird, but it works for us. For the first couple months she was, after she was born, we bed shared, and then we co-slept where she just slept in a bassinet next to us. 
And then once she was getting around four months, it was just not working to have us all in the same room. I was losing a ton of sleep. Just, I would wake up every time she rolled over or made a noise or breathed loud. It was insane. So we just decided we, we can't sleep in the same room after that point. And she can't sleep out in the living room because we stay up later than her and get up earlier than her. So we just gave her our room and it's actually right off the living room, so we have to keep the door closed when we're awake. But it works really well right now. And so when the next baby's born, I'm hoping that one of the upstairs rooms will be at least mostly finished and she can go up there in her crib and then we can go back in her bedroom for the while and bed share or co-sleep with the new baby and then we might have to move our bed back out into the living room. And it's just kind of a constantly changing situation and I don't even know if we'll be here by then. So I'm just, I don't have really firm plans. It's just whatever's working for us in the moment is what we're gonna do. So I think that's all the questions I'm gonna answer today. I don't want this video to be a million years long, but I hope this answered some of your questions and was entertaining to watch. If you enjoy seeing content like this and you wanna support our family, I will link our Patreon account down below. And again, I will link our Instagram there too. Thank you for watching and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.